Hi, Bill Stunt here, a contributor to Recording Magazine with the first in a two-part video tutorial on parallel compression. Now, parallel compression is a very effective mix technique that allows you to achieve many of the positive effects of normal serial or inline compression without obviously altering the natural dynamics of the sounds being compressed. Parallel compression, when used correctly, applies a kind of upward compression. It brings up the level of the quieter portions of the track and, as I say, at the same time, maintaining more of the natural dynamics. It can add more body to a track and by evening out the overall level, it can allow your track to sit more comfortably and consistently in the mix, which is obviously a good thing. In the first part of this tutorial, I'm going to show you a couple of ways to create a parallel compression chain for use on a single source or instrument. By far the simplest way to apply parallel compression to a single track is to take advantage of the fact that many modern plugin developers have built parallel processing right into the plugins themselves. And I'm going to show you how that works today with the bass track. Now I'm working in Pro Tools as you can see. If you're not a Pro Tools user, don't uh, be afraid or put off. Uh, the specifics might be slightly different, but you'll have no trouble uh, taking these techniques and applying them in the, in the work uh, tool of your choice. Now I've got a bass track I've been working on here. I recorded this recently, a good player, a good instrument, done through a, a decent DI. There was no amp involved in this recording, just a DI. I've done a little bit of work on it. I've added a, a channel strip and I've done a tiny bit of EQ, not too much. But I've got the track sounding close to what I want it to sound like in the final mix. And this is important. You don't want to start working with parallel compression until the source is already sounding pretty close to where you want to get it. The parallel compression is the thing that's going to just bring it over the top and make it sit perfectly in your mix. So I'm going to go ahead and add, choose a dynamics processor that has parallel processing built in. And for this example, I'm going to use the Massey CT5. It's a great sounding uh, compressor and it works really well on bass. It works on many sources, but I particularly like it on bass. Now, counterintuitively, and I say that because part of the goal of parallel compression is not to radically alter the dynamics of the performance. So counterintuitively, you want the parallel compressor to work very hard. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to pull the compress knob up here. There's no ratio to set with the Massey. The more you, uh, you bring up the compress knob, uh, the more compression you achieve. And you can see I'm getting almost, almost well, to over 20 dB of compression there. I'll have to bring up the output here so you can hear it a little bit better. And what you can hear, I think, is a very flat, completely uh, devoid of dynamics performance on the bass. It does not sound good on its own. Uh, one thing I'd like to tell you, when you're working on your parallel compression, you're going to want to play with your uh, attack and release times. I'm not going to do it in now for, in the, for the purposes of this demonstration, but I would and I will as I work on this track. And what you want to do is have the attack and release working in such a way that it's musical and that it matches up with the tempo and the feel and the way that the song is played. Where we get into parallel compression with the Massey CT5 and other uh, processors that have this ability built in, is this blend function. Other processors might call that mix or a wet dry balance. They have different uh, nomenclatures but they do the same thing. When this blend function in the Massey CT5 is all the way to the right, you're hearing nothing but process compressed sound. I'm going to take it all the way to the left and that's taking that compressor right out. What you want to do is slowly blend back in some compressed sound with the uncompressed sound. And you can hear it almost immediately it changes that sound. There's a sweet spot that I'll find that will be the perfect place to make that song or that performance feel consistent and have weight and uh, authority in the track. So that, that's the quickest and easiest way to do parallel compression. I think you would agree. Now, even in the modern day, in the modern day of the DAW, with all the great tools we have, not every processor has that ability to do parallel compression or parallel processing built in. And if there's a dynamics processor that you want to use that doesn't have it, you're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way, the way I learned to do it back in the old analog days. And that's by cloning the track. So I'm going to clone this bass track, and in Pro Tools, the Shift Option D key command brings up a duplicate tracks dialog, which I will select, and you can see I've duplicated that track. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and add a dynamics processor that doesn't have parallel processing built in. And I'm just going to use the stock tool in Pro Tools, this one, and I will uh, mute this unprocessed bass track. Solo that again as I did in the last one. I'm going to haul that threshold down so I'm getting a substantial amount of gain reduction. 
uh, almost 18 dB there. I, I'm going to leave the ratio in what I would call a normal range for me. A normal being what I would use normally on a base if I was just doing serial compression. And 3 to, point, uh, 3 to 1 is somewhere in the range I would normally use. Uh, again, you might want to play, and I'm pretty sure you will want to play with these attacks and the, the attack and the, and the release functions. You might even want to play with the knee until you get something that sounds right. But you can hear I've really, really squashed out the dynamics of that track. It sounds terrible. I'm going to take that out, take this uh, uncompressed one out of mute, and I'll slowly add in this parallel compressed track. And again, you can start to hear it fill out. It's a little bit more consistent, got a little bit more heft and weight. And I think that's going to sound pretty good in the track when I start to blend it back in. So a little ways to go in terms of tweaking that to make it just perfect. But I think you get that sense of what a parallel compression can do uh, to a source like a bass. In part two of this video tutorial on parallel compression, I'll show you a technique for applying parallel compression to a submix of many elements. And with this technique, you can add a very satisfying sense of excitement by highlighting the explosive snap and pop of a drum or percussion performance. Please subscribe to Recording Magazine's YouTube channel for more videos like this one. Follow Recording Magazine on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And please subscribe to Recording Magazine either digitally or in hard copy print edition. I'm Bill Stunt. Thanks for watching.